Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Eve or Bust, episode 3. Now, in the last episode, I had built myself a return vehicle from uh, Eve. It was small, it had wheels, and it had about 400 stages. Now, my task was to get that into orbit, and so what did I do? Well, I strapped mainsail underneath it with some fuel tanks feeding into it, a whole bunch of struts, a couple of... Um, a couple of uh, reaction wheels to kind of keep the thing straight and steer it and that's pretty much it. The way it actually is hooked in is by a pair of the new large docking ports. The docking ports, I'm, I'm starting to use the large ones and they, you have to be very careful when you're using these to make sure that you actually get them facing the right way. If you look, the outside of the hatch has a little handle on it. That's the way you tell which side is which and the other side is flatter. And uh, yeah, so we're going to use this thing with a mainsail to push it into orbit. It, what I can do is turn on and off the fuel flow through the um, through this these hatches, through these docking nodes, and therefore, when, if I run out of fuel in the booster stage, I can start pulling fuel from the, the actual lander. And obviously, we're going to later send up a second spacecraft to refuel this thing. Where you see we're just getting this into a circular orbit. We've depleted almost all the fuel. Well, we've depleted all the fuel in the actual lander itself. And given that there's like a hundred tiny little fuel tanks, refueling this thing is going to be an awful tedious process. But um, it's a whole lot less tedious than actually trying to launch a thousand plus part rocket and having to use cheat engine to make the thing work at a reasonable frame rate and not die. But yeah, we got there, we uh, get ourselves into orbit, and um, yeah, so we should start transferring the fuel forwards. Uh, this is four times normal speed. In real world, it seems painfully slow. Anyway, of course, I had talked about the mobile lab, the actual lander I was sending, and this is it. This is the fruit of my work, and there's obviously a lot of B9 aerospace parts in this. I, I kind of wanted to make the lander look like something completely unlike any other rover. So what we have is, well, this thing actually can take something like 17 crew if necessary. I only have two crew in it, or well actually I've got four crew in it right now for testing. Obviously the return vehicle only supports four, so what we're doing is we're putting four Kerbals onto the surface in a very large vehicle that will let them explore and do all the science they need since they can't take it with them. They're going to do it on the surface, analyze stuff, find out what EVE is all about, why it's so darn purple. We are using the Panopticon module as the for the, the driver here. He can give them a great view of everything ahead of him so he can crash into things if necessary. It also looks pretty nice from this angle. You can see in the staging diagram there is a ton of parachutes. That is how it will be delivered. Uh, I, I kind of set this my goal for this to be that I really wanted to use those giant wheels and make it kind of look good. I'm not sure I succeeded. Now, um, you see there's a little, a little uh, seat up here that you can sit and get a little higher view from here if you like. And... Oh, uh oh, he seems to be stuck here. Um, how does he get out here? Let's uh, try sitting back in the seat and see if I can get around this. You see all the railings and stuff? This is a vehicle that's really designed as a kind of mobile building, right? So there's a lot of flat surfaces. Oh, wow, he just clipped through the barriers there. Those are not OSHA certified. Look at that. He just fell straight through the barrier. Okay. Well, uh, Leia, let's wander around and take a look on the, at this spacecraft. Uh, uh oh. Um, seems to be sliding around a little. That might not be right. Maybe I can. Maybe I should stop this vehicle. Uh oh. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes, I know you're there. Stop looking so down. Ah, okay. Can we turn on the brakes? No, we can't because there's no other control nodes on this whole thing. Just these guys sitting in their in the office area. It does actually need a an honest to god Kerbal sitting in it to make it work. Great. Oh, 
And now we've developed a really cool walking animation here, as in no animation at all. Well, anyway, that's great. You can imagine how this would look if he was walking around all over the surface here. Okay, there. That might break him out of his, his uh, anime. No. He now looks completely different. That is bizarre and hilarious at the same time. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, you can see where we have the four-man cargo pod in there so that we actually have an interior. On the side, we have these these um, fuselage, the passenger fuselage from um, B9. Those contain six crew each, but I'm not sure there's actually a hatch in any way. So the only way you can move uh, pilots in and out of them is using something like the crew manifest plugin. Okay, he, well, he's going to try and get up to the control tower up to onto the, the control place. And he has to get out because we don't have any interior corridors. So we open up this uh, open up the stairs. This is how he gets up there. Climb up the ladder. And this negotiating the top of this is well it basically is luck. You just kinda keep trying, let go, keep trying, and then eventually uh oh, come on. Let get over that. Get over that hump. It's just, there we go, excellent. Excellent, sir. Now you head up those stairs. We don't have stairs, but we could add stairs. That It's just a very steep ramp. And uh, we can climb up the ladder so we can get to this access. Well, oh dear, that didn't work quite as well as I expected. <laughs> oh, darn those railings. I thought I really wanted to use the railings parts because I I don't know, I just like the idea of being able to walk around on top of a spacecraft and have it designed like that. This uh, doesn't look quite as good as I, I'd expect, but... Nevertheless, look, he can get in. Aha! There, he is now the pilot. Bob Kerman, in there, he's taking control, so he can put the brakes on. Meanwhile, um, yeah, he is still stuck in his animation cycle. <laughs> <laughs> he's miraculous. He's been crippled ever since that ejection incident, that, that crash. <laughs> he hasn't been able to straighten his neck correctly ever since that. Well, there we go. Let's close this up. And see, I like the lights flashing and everything. See that? Look, it just... It just drives just fine. Doesn't this look marvelous? I like the bay. I really, what I wanted to do was have one of them at the front with a big wide ramp that folded down, but I couldn't work out how to get the cockpit sitting nicely above it without making it look terrible. Let's uh, let's see how it looks at night, incidentally, since we have you know a bunch of lights on this thing to make it look functional. There, turn the lights on. No, turn the lights on. Yeah, look, we get headlamps. You have that nice little headlamp cluster here, and yeah, we have interior lights as well in the labs. Presumably that's where the scientific work will be done. See, as I said, it's got room for like, you know, 18 kerbals or something, and it's only going to have a crew of four, so they can stretch their legs, they can hang out there for a really long time, do their work, and only when they're done and when they're ready do they actually need to leave. In fact, they might want to stay there forever. That will be up to them, but uh, there will only be one bus leaving, and it will be... There will be one chance, basically. Because <laughs> it's going to be a lot of effort to actually send these guys back into space. I tell you what, it looks a whole lot faster from the inside than it does from the outside, doesn't it? Uh, I kind of like the, the lighting pattern as well. It makes it look like an angry spider or something. Now, I want to test the landing system. We're going to presume that Kerbin is close enough to Eve. Uh, you know, usual, usual caveats apply. It has a higher gravity, but we hope that that is offset by the fact that it has a higher air density. And I'm going to basically fly up. This is a very small design I came up with. Now, interesting thing to note here is the the reaction wheels. How I have a couple of couple of girders um, welded to it, and those stick out to provide anchor points for struts. That cradle uh, is basically the key to the whole thing. Those um, those reaction wheels are actually really important as well because although it's mostly centered, the center of mass is just far enough off center. Without those, the thing will just 
fall all over the place. It wouldn't be able to steer straight. But yeah, the pilot is doing a good job here. He's just like checking stuff out. Looking around out from his magnificent viewpoint. Nobody else has a, a view as good as him. And uh, once once the parachutes open, the thing flips the other way. I think the tail section that is used in B9 probably has a really low air resistance compared to the rest. So it ends up falling first until the parachutes open. That's about as balanced as I've got it. It, it does actually flatten out a little as it gets closer to the surface, but... It'll land at about 7 meters per second, and that seems to be fine for those wheels, but, you know, worst comes to the worst, we can in fact fix those wheels, because every Kerbal spacesuit contains a pocket with one of those ginormous wheels on it, so they can fix them, regardless of where they are. Yeah, let's uh, bring our pilot out, or bring one of our crew out. Hey! It looks much better when you don't realize that there's a crew can in there. It looks like he's just like totally walking out the back. It's all about the camera angles, right? It's a shame I've already ruined it by telling you and showing you. Yeah, look, he can sit up there and drive that as well. That's the other option. If he decides to get some fresh air on Eve. Whatever fresh air on Eve is like. Uh, I imagine it's you know, very purple and not very good for your lungs. Do Kerbals have lungs? I mean, we presume they breathe because they have spacesuits, but we don't actually know enough about Kerbal physiology to answer the question of whether they have lungs or not. Anyway, it turns out that that basic design that I had is just about sufficient to get us into orbit. And of course, once we get into orbit, we have to deal with getting to E, but the first step is getting to orbit. Another interesting thing to note is that I couldn't figure out how to anchor anything onto this in a sane location. The only place that has a flat surface that I was able to bond a stage to, attach a stage to, was the front of the Panopticon cockpit. So when you saw when you, he, he is looking straight down at the ground and getting pulled forwards. The only thing he can see is the giant rocket booster pushing him forwards. So, um, oh well, you know, I'm sure he's a I'm sure he's quite capable of that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this thing comes out with about 4.6 kilometers per second delta V. And uh, as you can see, we are getting pretty close to it, to our orbit. We ended up in some random spin motion, which is, I don't know what caused that. I suspect it was something to, work, to do with aerodynamic properties, but honestly, I don't know. As soon as we cut the power, we stopped spinning. Uh, so I set up my maneuver node, and uh, as we got higher, I just pointed the thing in the right direction. Got myself ready to go. We're going to need about 200, uh, 270, whatever, and our, our delta V is barely more than the amount that we require. So I cut this very fine. In fact, I got considered myself into orbit, and I had 4 meters per second of delta V left. Uh, that is the smallest margin, I think, that I've managed. <laughs> uh, but that that we can detach now. We'll, we'll, we'll detach the, the booster stage. You see, again, it's using the large docking adapters. We will attach something to that later, which will carry out the transfer to EVE. We just need to figure out what guys that will take. And we also need the crew transfer vehicle, which will be the actual spacecraft the crew will travel in. Although although Bill is sitting in this right now, he really doesn't want to travel the entire distance inside this car. It's, it's designed to drive, it's not designed to fly through space. But uh, yeah, it gets out, we'll, we'll take a look at how this looks from space. With all the angles weird and all that, huh? He's just doing a gonna do a quick investigation to make sure that the launch with all those struts and everything did not permanently damage their great vehicle. Now it looks like all the wheels are in alignment. The door still works. Uh, not that it's any use, but it does in fact work. And well, the wheels are there. Do we have a back door? We'll just come in and look at that. It looks darn pretty. I, I probably should have the have the Galaxy or the Universe Replacer mod plugged in, but um, 
I've I've been having memory issues that caused random crashes, and I really don't want to be losing chunks of Kerbal Space Program that I've been working on simply because I, I wanted to have the more awesome textures. I'm sure it will become part of the default game soon enough. Okay, let's open the cargo hold. And uh, there it goes. Flashing red lights mean danger or something. Yep. Gets inside. He's actually got a fair amount of room in there. I could, I had considered like putting a mini rover in here, but I figured that that joke was uh, a little tired by now. But yeah, there we go. We have two of our spacecraft in orbit. We need to refuel them. We need to build transfer boosters. But uh, that is all future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>